morning, everybody. Dear members and attenders, welcome to the second day of the International Conference on Genomics in the Nursing Profession. We hope you enjoyed yesterday two session. We found them super interesting and they gave us a broad overview of what they have achieved in the USA and Canada, opening doors to the new horizons. Today, all the speakers are in the university and come from Finland and Slovenia. The presentation time will be 20, 25 minutes, and then we will give a way to 10 minutes of questions. We hope you enjoy the day. And the first speaker, Arja, uh, she's a PhD adjunct professor, uh, is a principal lecturer in Tampere University of Applicate Science. She is also project manager in the GenoNurse project. She was also project was manager in the uh, Profitu Strategic Profit Fund by the Ministry of the Education and Culture. Profitu is project explore future competence needs for genomic information for uh, healthcare. Richard Aria in genomics in nursing, as well as an ethical question in the field of genomic research. Welcome, Arja. Thank you. So good morning, is my voice okay? Yeah. And it's nice to be here and tell a little bit about uh, what we have done in Tampere, uh, Finland. First, you just to know where is Tampere. It's situated in the middle of a little bit for, uh, uh, 100 kilometers from Helsinki. Uh, you can see the place and you can see that we, are, we have a uh, well, we are well known, high quality of education, and I can say that we are really. And our university is the uh, second biggest uh, university uh, applied science in Finland. We have over more than 10,000 uh, students and over 40 degree programs in our, our university. So, then about the genomics, why we started? Uh, we think uh, by then, a few years ago, that genomic data is an example of big data that will change the whole healthcare. And uh, we can see that the, that is the future that we are going ahead of. And because uh, our university is involving and creating new competencies, we think that genomic competence is something that is really important for healthcare professionals. And uh, it's also evident that the public uh, are expecting that nurses have knowledge and they can explain also the genomics information for, for them when they ask or discuss about their health. And uh, nurses also think that genomics is relevant, but we pretty soon find out that there are no actually no competence of, of genomics in, in Finland uh, related to nursing education. And when we look at the studies uh, globally, it was the same result. And I think we heard that yesterday when Cathy and Jacqueline told about us about that. And we also noticed that there is a lot of need for competence related to ethical issues. And Marie will tell you, tell you later about it. Uh, how important it is to, to, re, to reflect ethics in genomics. And I, I think that is the one big issue that nurses must do more, more in their, in their education. And there is also well aware that more education is needed, both in degree program and continuing education. And I think the continuing education will be the big challenge for all of us who will educate the, the nurses and, and the professionals. So I think all, all of you know about this P6 medicine. It's about so that medicine is going ahead with this preventive part of, of, of medicine. And um, also there's a lot of uh, European standard for what is the future medicine like this International Consortium for Personalized Medicine, they have a, have, a, have a statement of what is going to be in the future. And you can see the second, the first and second one is informed, empowered, engaged 
responsible citizen, and the second is uh, informed, empowered in case the responsible health providers. So that is what we actually have to go through. And and I can say that I and I think that many many of you can also confirm that at the point our healthcare providers are not informed, engaged, or empowered about genomics. So we have a lot to do. And this European one plus million genome initiative is also very important for nursing, even though um, they are speaking about training of healthcare professionals, but not specifically for nursing. So that's why we have to do also a lot of work that they recognize the nursing profession more and also take uh, take account us in in when they do this this kind of uh, programs and that is one reason for for us to to apply more international and and global uh, funding for for developing this nursing genomics and also we know that genomics is uh, transferring from single gene diseases to multifactorial diseases, like Cathy was telling yesterday. So I'm not going to go get into this more because you heard yesterday how important genomics is in, in uh, healthcare at the moment. And uh, Cathy and co-workers has, and Emma has, has stayed in, in, a, in the, in the uh, publication that we have a nurses have a central role of bringing the benefits of genomics and precision medicine to everyday healthcare. But as you heard, and I, like I said before, nursing comes a long way from medicine. So we have really, really mm. big work to do. So then, then a little bit uh, about the profit too. We got the funding from a Minister of Education and Culture in Finland, um, uh, and we started the project May uh, 2019 and ended August 2021. And you can see the aims of the project. And one big uh, aim was to develop competence of uh, our staff related to genomics, because when we started the project, there was no they haven't even heard about the genomics in nursing. So we have a, like, a, like a zero level in our university. And pretty soon that we, we discovered that we have to actually focus the first six months, educate our educators. That was really important. And explain them why genomics is so important. Uh, you may think that, is it possible that the nursing professional or nursing educators doesn't see that. But even though if they haven't heard about genomics or they don't they don't know how to integrate that in, in, in their teaching, that is, uh, they have to just to, to teach more and have a knowledge for their for the, for the, for the, uh, teaching uh, material. Of course, we had a lot of other aims uh, like education development, uh, build a roadmap for res responsible use of patient data, a new project in collaboration with domestic and international partners. And the last one is really important, like Kathy and Jacqueline said yesterday, it's, uh, it's so important that you contact the people in your own country, but also international partners and start collaboration. Because we be between... Um, the bigger group, uh, so together we are much more than if we are doing that only only by uh, ourselves. So in the beginning of project, we go and contact every important uh, collaborators in Finland, and everybody was really happy to join our project and develop our, our education because they say that they, this has been waiting for so long already. So we didn't have any difficulties to, to find partners in our project. So the next important issue is organizational support and commitment for the change. And Tom really did that. 
we have strategy for 2030 and and you can see the what is our means to influence it's a lifelong learning qualification education internationality research development and innovations and it was also written in a, in a new top competencies what we are going to develop in the focus area so it was like uh, written in in our strategy that development of individuality of health services by using data competence and genome data so that is that make us more visible and we have a, a permit to continue our our uh, our development process and also like i said uh, our teachers need some education we have a lot of webinars in our our uh, two within two years about ethics, legislation, patient education, inherited diseases, diabetes, pharmacogenesis, direct to consumer tests that is really important because they are growing, growing market at the moment, and cancer and genomics. And also we had a possibility to offer our teachers to have a scientific merit so they applied PhD studies and now three of our teachers are doing uh, PhD in, uh, related to genomics so now we have also research coming to to this uh, development process and then nursing curricula it was really big work in our university and we started that thinking about where, where all places in, in, in process of genomics in healthcare, nurses are involved. And here you can see our tree. We, we think that it was the uh, competence of growth was like a tree that can give in a new leaves uh, uh, when um, the competence grows. So in this picture, we think that when we have the genomic data, we have all infrastructure like genomic center, biobanks, or registers which are very good in Finland. Patients are giving samples to research and care and informed consent process. That is where nurses are really, really important role when they explain what is the genomic why the sample is taken, what, what are the privacy issues, and all ethical issues related to genomics. And that is nurses' work in Finland. And then data analysis and data delivery. When the data come out from, uh, from a healthcare uh, or, or research uh, institute, where did, where, how we can use it? We can use it in research, we can use it in development process or innovations, but we can use it also in healthcare and also with the patient or client. But I think the most important issue is the health and well being of our citizens and information or genomic literacy and interpretation what is actually that means that result means to that individual person and patient counseling co coaching at the point we um, call it co uh, coaching it can be education training whatever you want to use what kind of concept you want to use and all these uh, leaves we think that we need more uh, to to grow and Ninu will give a uh, and Nina will give a presentation about Gina on this project, which is actually now going a little bit further with this development process. So when we applied more, more funding. Uh, there is a nice paper in, in, um, in uh, it was 2022, beginning of this year, we wrote in, um, in uh, uh, frontiers genetics uh, about the process of, of our development process and i don't know if it's a little bit small about that so i think that the process is called that first you actually have to have funding then collaborators partners uh, companies universities uh, uh, 
uh, other project institutes, whatever you, you, you may find. And then the organizational commitment, like I said, then the faculty committee teachers commitment, and then curriculum work and implementation. And it go all around because you have to do that development all over mm -hmm. again. But there's more information in, in this paper if you are interested. Um, in our nursing curricula, there is now basic of genetics and genomics is a, a two credit uh, self-directed course, online course. So it will be in the first semester and it will it is now in Finnish and in English. And the content is concept related to genetics and genomics, uh, patient guidance, ethical aspect and legislation. So all our nurse students are doing this one in the, in the beginning of their study. And here is one example from our article, uh, how we integrate genomics in public health, nurse uh, curriculum. In the first, you can see, because they do first uh, uh, nurse uh, care studies, and all these uh, studies, the genomics was integrated. And then when they have the specialization in public health care, it was also integrated in a different courses. So we didn't do any other specific course for genomics. We, we think that it's better that it's integrated in an in a existing curriculum. It's much easier to start. And then about the patient education, uh, we think that when the nurses have, or anyway, we have a genomic data, we have all kinds of educational theories, we have, any, we have a lot of ethical decision-making theories, and all these are behind our development process. So we think that they have to understand, uh, they have to have more competence of, the, of their genomics, and then deepening of knowledge when they do their, their studies. And what this means in practice is that we look at the, our curriculum in every semester and we, uh, we look at how, what kind of uh, guidance or educational method we have been using in our, our studies. And we found out that um, because our teachers are quite independent and they have autonomy to do their studies, whatever they like, uh, they were overlapping with these methods. And our student actually gave uh, a feedback about that. And now we, now we gave uh, one example so that when they study in the first semester, uh, they are more easy one, like face-to-face -face guidance and uh, verbal guidance and demonstration. And when they go further, they study is more, more complicated or more, more difficult or uh, um, not difficult, maybe uh, advanced methods you can use. And the last semester you can use like a telephone guidance, uh, guidance in the work community, uh, motivating interviews and all these kind of methods. So, so that you, they learn and learn more about the uh, uh, teaching and uh, educating the patient. This was really big work for, for, there was a group and Marie was a lead of this group. So uh, it was really important work. And then we have also health promotion master degree program. And we have two uh, five credit uh, courses related to, to genomics in that master program. Uh, first is personal life health promotion. And you can see the uh, content. Uh, it's about uh, personal health and health promotion, genetic data and health promotion and research, ethical issues, uh, specific issues to use and utilization of health information, and also legislation and it, uh, other instructions. And the second one is a genomic data for health promotion. And you can see the content here, it, genomic knowledge, genomic research, national data banks and network and international data banks and networks. So 10, 10 credit 
together. And this is something new in Finland. We don't have any other master programs, this kind of uh, courses. But I think most important was our student engagement. Um, thesis, we had a lot of thesis, both in bachelor programs and master program. And here are a few examples of, of the title of the thesis. One was use of genomic information in prevention of type two diabetes, health equality in genomic research, genomic information in the future health promotion of organization, nursing experience of informed consent guidance in biobank study, and student purpose of the use of genomic information in biobanking. These are only a few ones. I think there were more than, within these two years, more than 20 theses all together in, in, in this uh, field. And international collaboration. This was really important in the beginning of, of when we started, we, we Google and find like two uh, G2NA and we found Kathy Carlson and we found Emma and all this and we just contact them and the rest of his history. Now we are working with them. So just, I encourage you all just to contact like Kathy and Jacqueline said yesterday, it's very easy just contact and, and tell that you want to uh, collaborate. We do collaboration with the education, competence building research. We have now Gino Nurse Erasmus uh, Plus funding. We just submitted the cost action uh, last week and we are going ahead horizon later on. So key points from uh, my, my presentation, funding was really important for us so that we can start it. Without that, we couldn't do this. Organizational commitment, really important. Uh, actually, it, it's crucial for the, for, the, for the whole process. Like I said, national and international partners, <clears throat> teachers, competencies and commitment and collaborate, collaboration, developing the curriculums because we didn't do by ourselves. We asked all the teachers to be part of that. And student engagement, actually students were really, really uh, interested to be with this kind of pro pro process because they, they say that this is something innovative and new that actually doesn't happen in healthcare at the moment. Like I said, we are doing a research and also publications. So I, I think that we all have to think about the future of nursing education and come out of the box and try to think about what is it, it in continuing education or curriculum or research or competence. And I would like to in, invite you all online or, or in Kuopio. We have a genomic symposium in next March 15 and 16. And it's together with the University of Eastern Finland. So we are going to continue with this uh, collaboration with in this symposium. Thank you. Does anyone in the public has a question? Yeah. Thanks, Aria. I was just wondering, you talked about the various courses that you now have where genomics is being taught, you know. Um, so how many members of staff are, are now feeling comfortable to, to do that teaching or do you just have one or two people who are going into each of those courses and, and, and doing the delivery? At the moment, is, is it that, that there are only one or two teachers at the moment? Uh, we are going to uh, discuss now with all the teams uh, and ask the, the current situation so that we can start developing uh, the more teachers be competent. And actually now in, in, in our university, all new teachers will have in their orientation about this genomics so, so that they have to in, integrate the studies. So hopefully it will get better. It's not at the moment, uh, but we are 
hoping that we are going better in the future. But like Jacqueline said yesterday, it's a long way. It's a long way that, that all our teachers will, will integrate genomics in their studies. Thank you, Arja, for your presentation. I have a question. When you explain that the students do lessons or the, the, train, the nurses do masters, do you, in this program you know, about the lessons, they do training in the hospital about genomics or at least a study our lessons? No, they, they have a, a lessons in our university and then they go training. Uh, it's there are no like a specific training for genomics. It will come in 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 the care. And our students said that it, especially in in biobanking was really in, important uh, part of their training in hospital because they, in in Finland every hospital is collecting biobank samples. So now they have knowledge to actually explain to the patient what is going on with the biobank. And previously they didn't have. And they said, oh, they said also, <coughs> uh, nurses who were working in a, in, a, in, a, in a field, they didn't have any knowledge about the biobanking. So they say that uh, once they know something more than the nurses who are teaching them in a training. Thank you.